What's up guys? Matt Bell here with Electric Violin Shop. <clears throat> we are live on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, Facebook again, I don't know why they're not letting me turn this thing sideways, uh, but they're not. So uh, if you really feel like you need to see me uh, landscape instead of portrait, you can pop over to YouTube. Uh, YouTube supports it for now. Yeah. Um, we're here with EVL, Electric Violin Luthery Violins. Uh, I've sort of known about these guys for a while, but I never had my chance to never had a chance to get my hands on some of the instruments. But that has changed. We have two of them in the shop right now. We have uh, this one right here. It's a dragonfly, and uh, we have this one right here, also dragonfly. Hey, looky there. Um, so we have two of their dragonfly models in, one with a Barbera and one with a starfish pickup. Uh, the starfish one also has their um, sort of strap system on here, which uh, I'll have to demonstrate for you guys in a little bit. But uh, just so you know sort of where these things are positioned in the market, uh, these are the most affordable instruments that we will carry that have the Starfish or the Barbera pickups on them. Um, so this one with the Barbera is a uh, five string, 1550 bucks with a Barbera. And that's incredible because a Barbera is like, the, the pickup alone is like a third of that cost. Um, so this is a very, very low cost instrument with a super amazing pickup on it. The Barbera pickup is kind of, the gold standard really for pickups on violins. If you if, if you want beef, you want thickness, you want complexity, Barbera is where it's at, okay? Um, there are a couple of reasons you might not want a Barbera. One is uh, obviously price. Um, and then the other one is that Barberas have been known, unfortunately, to be a little bit higher maintenance than a lot, a lot of other pickups. It is a... Uh, there's just, there's a lot of complexity in this pickup here. There are two pickup elements for every string. And the way the cassette sits in here and it has to vibrate freely, um, it's not super uncommon for people to call us and go, oh my God, my D string's not as loud as my other strings. It's usually because there's some sort of uh, gunk has gotten inside this little, uh, this little um, channel here. And it has caused the pickup to not be able to vibrate freely and that's gonna cause those strings to not be as loud. If you have had a Barbera for any length of time, uh, there's not an outside chance that you've had that issue that, oh my goodness, one of my strings isn't working. I think the piezo element must have gone bad. Um, while that does occasionally happen, it is really rare. Um, it's, it's really rare for piezo elements to go bad in these Barberas. In fact, a lot of times people are like, they're just, I'm gonna insist on sending this back to Barbera. He gets it back, he takes it apart, and everything's working. Gosh, look at there, nothing's wrong with it. It just tur it turned out that there was just something that was stopping that thing from, from vibrating freely. Um, you can either usually hit it with a little bit of air or you sort of tap on it, a little percussive maintenance, um, and it'll make them work again. So that's sort of, that's one of the drawbacks to Barbera uh, is that they do tend to be a little more high maintenance than some pickups. Um, and by high maintenance, I mean you sort of have to pay a little bit of attention to how much funk gets in here. If you're one of those guys that plays with so much rosin that you look like Pigpen from the Peanuts cartoon, uh, this probably isn't the pickup for you. Um, 
I think rosin dust is, my guess, I haven't done a study on it, but my guess is that rosin dust is probably the number one reason that people have problems with them. But they just sound so good, my goodness. <laughs> Barbera just, man, they just really sound good. What's up, Les? Um, you guys may also be sort of asking, because uh, it's hot. Right now we're using the, uh, the what is this, the Boss something, WL20. The WL20, it's one of them numbers and letters. Um, so, yeah, right now I'm using one of those today, and it's just because I was wanting to try it out. So, uh, there you go. All right, there's the... There's the Barbera sound, and then we're going to talk about the uh, starfish sound. Uh, one of the things is that the starfish is not quite as hot as the Barbera. Not really a big deal. You just turn it up. You generally have an amplifier. Um, it is a little bit different looking pickup than the Barbera. Here's the starfish. For those of you who aren't super familiar with the Barbera, here's the Barbera. Very uh, sort of classic. Barbera look. This is a starfish, a little bit different. Barberas are made in New York. Starfishes are made in England. Um, it's got uh, a little more of a balanced sound to it. The Barbera is pretty bottom heavy, uh, which is one of the things I like about it. I'm a rock guy, so the, the more bottom end, the better for me. Um, but they can be a little bit bottom heavy. The starfish is a little more balanced um, and maybe a little clearer but not um not quite as full <laughs> we'll turn up a little more can't be too loud right that's silly Notifications, crazy. Uh, so yeah, the EVL Dragonfly is a super, super, super lightweight instrument. Uh, no, I don't mind at all. I really, I really like the sound of the Starfish pickup a lot. I'm not about to trade my Barbera for one, but I think for a lot of people who don't need 
the, the thunder that I need for, for my thing, um, I think there's a lot of people that might be equally happy or even more happy with a starfish. You just got to understand they're not quite as loud. So you're going to have a little higher gain in your system. Um, but the balance is really nice. They've got a nice woody sound to them. Uh, really clear top to bottom. I feel like the E string and the C string uh, speak equally well. Um, Starfish makes four, five, six, and seven string pickups, which is really handy because EVO makes four, five, six, and seven string violins. Um, we asked for a couple of fives so that we could check them out because, uh, you know, fives are, we probably sell more fives than anything. Um, although I can't imagine we won't be getting some sixes in here at some point. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I might have a little bit of reminiscence of the Violectra. Um, so anyway, yeah, this is just, it's a super low cost instrument for what you get. It's uh, $1,400 um, and then the 1550 for the Barbera pickup. Um, I will say, um, without being, you know, I like to present sort of a warts and all thing. I'll tell you exactly what I think about the instrument. Um, probably my biggest criticism on this instrument is um, like super fine attention to detail. Um, and I think that comes with that comes with the price. Like, you know, it costs money to spend a bunch of time on these instruments. And I think if you spend another 10 hours on each one of these, really, really fighting for that super tight fit and finish and really fighting for the, the perfect sanding job and, and the, you know, the perfect roundness of all these things, um, I think, yeah, I mean, the instrument would be, uh, aesthetically a little bit nicer from, from three inches away, but, um, the way he's been able to get the cost where he's gotten the cost is by making sure that he doesn't, you know, he doesn't spend 30 hours sanding these things. Um, the chin rest holds, uh, good. Yeah. It's one of these style chin rests. This one is the hypoallergenic chin rest that, that clamps on there. You know, I'm not about to like yank on it and see if it'll come off. Um, yeah, there's always one. Um, um, nasal, I really don't get that at all. I'm not hearing a nasal sound here at all. Um, a lot of people, I, I will hear that occasionally from people. It sounds nasal. I, I don't get that at all. Um, it's not what I'm hearing. If that sounds nasal to you, I, I don't know doesn't sound as old to me. Um, the, um, it does have these tuners in the back, um, the mechanical tuners with these tuners. Um, it's a little awkward to tune these because like my body's kind of in the way. Um, um, like it's, uh, hey, EVL's here, what's up guys? If you guys have questions, Peter, the uh, the maker of electric violin, luthery violins, EVL violins, he is on the Facebook side. So if you guys want to join us on the Electric Violin Shop Facebook page, um, four string is available, yes. Um, uh, yeah, four, five, six, and seven. Um, yeah, so the advantage to having the tuners on the back side like this is that you keep all the weight off of this end, makes it nice and easy to hold. Uh, there, I weighed this thing this morning on our, our thing that we use to send mail, uh, and it's one pound and five ounces, so super, super light, and all the weight's way back here. So, like, as far as there, there's nothing in my hand. There's, like, no weight in my hand at all right here. Um, so that's really nice. For me, it's, it's any of the instruments, the Jordans, the 3D Various, the EVL, any of the instruments that have the tuners back here and underneath, it, it's a little, it's, I think it would take a little bit of getting used to, especially like on this side, to tune. But, um, you know, I would, I would say that the trade-off for having your tuners back here and keeping the weight off of this end, I feel it's a good trade-off. I'm just, uh, you know, I want to tell you guys what I think. Um, the other thing for me, I feel like the fingerboard on this end is, is a pretty strong radius. Um, it's, it's pretty heavily radiused down here. I don't know if you guys can see on the video. Like that's, that's not very flat. Um, if you like a nice strong radius down there, well, there you go. You got it. Um, 
it's more radius than most of the instruments that I play, so it just feels it feels really hilly to me. Um, but it's it's not hard to play. I don't have any trouble. I don't have any trouble playing it. It's 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 a little more radius than uh, most of the instruments that um, that I play. Uh, again, super lightweight. I say the the woods are really pretty. I do really like the selection of woods here. And Peter's talked about trying to get away from. Um, he wants to be environmentally friendly and not use endangered woods, not use anything that's, um, there's a whole big rosewood thing going on right now that if you're trying to fly an instrument around the world, there could be an issue with rosewood because there's one certain species of rosewood that is endangered. And of course, what, you know, what environmental agencies do, uh, they just say, well, no rosewood at all. And most rosewood is not endangered. Um, and Peter's using the stuff that is locally sourced and um, and um, sustainable. That's the word I'm looking for, sustainable. Um, so it is, um, yeah, it's a really, really pretty violin. I like the, the looks of it quite a bit. Um, CITES, that's the thing I was looking for. There's too many, uh, um, all these comments are coming flying in on both sides. I'm trying to read comments and keep my train of thought and, uh, and, and still be able to play. And, and look fabulous. It's all these things I'm trying to do. What's up, Thomas Jenkins? Speaking of looking fabulous. Nice sounding instrument. I do really like the Starfish pickup a lot. Um, again, they're they're light, they're inexpensive. You can get great pickups on them. Uh, I will say, like you're not, if you're trying to compare this with a Jordan, uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna compare with a Jordan when you're thinking about like super fine attention to detail, use of all kinds of crazy woods. Um, not gonna compare with a Jordan. But you look at a Jordan is 4x the cost, right? Really listen to my plan. Oh, God. Uh, I should have practiced more. Uh, but thank you. Um, yeah, honestly, a really nice instrument, especially at this price. You're, you're not going to find any other instrument with these level of pickups that is handmade in the United States um, for, for this kind of price. Yeah, the uh, the gear tuners, man, what a uh, what a really really nice change from the standard pegs. Oh my goodness! If uh, think of Stradivari and Guarneri and those guys were around in 2020, they would not be messing with friction fit pegs. My goodness, what a uh, I mean, I guess it's kind of the best option they had in the 1700s, but uh, you know they'd probably be on Twitter too. So. Those guys, everybody see, everybody forgets that these guys, Stradivari and Guarneri, that they were innovators in their time. They were doing stuff that was new and fresh. And all the old school people of that time are, ooh, ooh we don't like what you guys are doing. It's new and different and different's bad. So it, they would be really amused that the people who love their instruments now think that somehow that they had re reached the, the pinnacle of evolution in the 1700s. Uh, yeah, I mean... Late 1600s, early 1700s, we've got it all figured out. There's nothing else to learn here. Um, so, yeah, the fact that uh, mechanical and geared pegs are available today, so much better. So much better technology. Um, yeah, that's one of the other things I want to talk about. EVL has the ability to, um, EVL has the ability to do custom work. Um, so it's not just these instruments. If you want one that is uh, custom made somehow, some way, different colors, different woods, different shapes even, um, they can do that kind of work. Uh, you're looking at, what'd you say, Peter, three to five months, kind of depending on how crazy you're trying to get. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's uh, probably three to five months. 
um, that that you'd be looking at if you want to do a custom order. Um, what else was I going to get to? Oh yeah, uh, Ernesto had asked about the, the chin rest on this. This is the um, this is the hypoallergenic chin rest. The one on the Barbera instrument. This is a um, on this particular instrument. He sent us one with an ebony chin rest, but that is not um, as I understand. That's not sort of the standard thing he likes to do. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to show you guys the shoulder support on this or the strap thing. So if you look here, I got two little buttons right here. Button, button, who's got the button? Is it a Whitner chin rest? I have no earthly idea. Uh, Peter, which chin rest is on here right now? So um, you snap on the little uh, strap lock thing. Oops, where'd my shoulder rest go? Uh, yeah, Whitner, uh, Whitner chin rest. I'm going to make this look a lot harder than it should be because I'm used to a very different strap system on my instrument. If I didn't do this every day on a very different strap, I could have made that look a lot easier. Um, but yeah, you got a thing where it pretty much it just straps right up here and it holds um yep Markwood style, somebody commented that. Uh, no, the Markwood style is completely different. It's got a chest support and there's like several points of contact on your body. But what this does do is if, you, uh, if you've if you got shoulder or neck issues where you're not able to hold up even something super, super low weight like this, um, then the strap can be, can be helpful. It can reduce fatigue and uh, can help you play for longer. And the longer you can play, the more money you can make. So, What's up, Jared Burnett? Speaking of making more money. Um, so yeah, we're, uh, we're going through the EVL violins today. Uh, super, super low cost instruments with really, really nice pickups on them. Um, these are made in New York. Uh, you're looking at about, oh my goodness, more, uh, you're looking at um, 14, 15, $1,600 or an instrument with a starfish or a Barbera pickup on it. Four, five, six, seven strings. Obviously the six and sevens are a little bit more, but not like crazy more, you know, not like $10,000 more. 10,000 would be a lot. Um, so yes, I really, you actually can stand it up like a broom, but just once a year, you have to be really careful. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but it sounded good. Uh, these are, uh, Peter, maybe you can tell me, this is a rosewood fingerboard, correct? On here, a locally sourced uh, or sustainable rosewood. Okay. Um, and then the bodies are maple. I think that's uh, what you had said earlier. And then these uh, shells across the bottom. So I guess you guys can see, can you see me now? You can see right through there. How do you like that? Um, what are the kind of other angles do you guys want here? There are no volume knobs or tone knobs or anywhere on here again sort of a minimalist uh design all this stuff is designed to keep the complexity and the cost down uh, and when you're operating in you're trying to i mean the whole deal behind evl he started this about 20 years ago and the idea was that he wanted to make affordable instruments for people he was seeing a lot of stuff like the wood violins and jordan violins and zeta violins are fantastic instruments but for a lot of people, 
uh, they're sort of outside their price. So he wanted to be able to make some instruments that are inside more people's price ranges, but wanted to be able to also have a nice sounding instrument because sort of the issue with a lot of inexpensive violins, if you guys go on eBay and you find some of these little $300 jobs, uh, you know, they catch fire or they break or they don't sound good. Um, so he's been able to make an American made instrument um, that is uh, a really, really reasonable price. Sounds good, feels good, looks good. I don't know, that's what I got. Um, so yeah, Peter, if you want, if you want to maybe chime in with some, some more uh, facts and figures on these things, that'd be fantastic. If you guys have questions, you can dump them in the comments section and we will do our best to answer those. While you're thinking about all this stuff, um, I've got another topic I want to hit real quick, and it was based on an email I got today, and actually an email I've gotten several times. Um, people asking uh, about this, this pickup mic. What pickup mic should I put on my instrument? Or, um, or people, trying to, people who confuse the term pickup and mic. Um, and I just, I'm going to sort of do a little video explanation for you guys. Maybe we'll sort of clip this and do a separate video with it. But the, uh, the difference between a pickup and a mic, I want to get to. A microphone is something that hears the sound of your instrument in the air. Okay, so it's in the air, it hears that sound, and then um, it turns that sound into electricity, and then that, that can go, hey, come on in, man. Come on in. I'm doing a live stream right now. Um, I'll probably be done in about 15, 15 minutes. Cool. A friend of mine just walked in the door. So um, we are a functioning music store, so sometimes people walk in. Uh, strings closer on a five string. Yeah, we've done a bunch of videos on that. Actually, if you look on our YouTube page, we've done several videos that talk about five string violins. Um, so, yes. Um, and the question here real quick, how do they compare to Yamaha violins? Um, how do they compare to Yamaha violins? They're a little different. Um, I would say that, um, yeah, I'll get back to the mic and pickup thing real quick. I'm gonna answer this Yamaha violin question. Um, uh, I would say Yamaha violins tend to sound a little thinner. You may, um, they're also factory made where these are handmade. So you're gonna see sort of the differences between factory made and handmade stuff. Um, and uh, what else? Yeah, because this has, the Yamaha pickup system tends to be a fairly thin sound, so I hope that's I hope that helps. Um, back to pickups and mics. A microphone takes sound waves out of the air and converts it to an electrical signal. A pickup takes a contact, a, 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 a vibration from a solid surface, and turns that into an electrical signal. So the advantage to a microphone is that it's actually listening about three inches, four inches above the instrument, and it's hearing the sound going through the air. And that, that goes into the mic, and then that goes out to the PA system, right? A pickup is actually physically touching the instrument somewhere. Sometimes it's in the bridge, sometimes it's under the bridge. It is sometimes it's touching the bottom of the instrument, um, but it's physically touching the instrument somewhere, and it's taking the vibrations of the instrument before it goes out to the air and it translates that to an electrical signal. The, uh, the advantage to a microphone is you get a more natural sound, you get all that sound that's uh, coming through the air, and then, so it sounds to the microphone the way it sounds to you, to your ear, because your ear's not touching the instrument, okay? So the microphone is gonna sound more like what you hear out in the world. The problem with a microphone is that a microphone cannot distinguish between sounds that are made by your violin and sounds that are not made by your violin. If you're standing three feet from a drummer and he's coming over his head every time with sticks, your violin cannot compete with those cymbals. So what that microphone is hearing is what's in the room. And if you're standing next to a drummer, it's hearing drums. If you're standing in front of a guitar player who thinks that 11 is the goal, then uh, it's hearing guitar because your violin ain't nearly as loud as, as a guitar amp that's on 11. Mine goes to 11. Um, so you may get a more natural sound in a quiet environment. In a loud environment, the advantage for a pickup is it is a more isolated signal. When I say more isolated, it doesn't mean it's totally isolated because the back of your acoustic violin 
is a giant diaphragm. And it is responding to the things that are happening in the room just the way a microphone would. So it's fairly thick because it's a piece of wood um, compared to a microphone diaphragm. But when you solo a violin channel in your headphones as a sound engineer, uh, and you're, if you're standing next to a loud guitar or drums or something, I can actually hear a little tiny bit of drums and stuff in there. It's much more, much more isolated than a microphone. It's going to be less, um, less of that sound that you that you're hearing from your violin, less of that airy, woody sound, but it's more isolated. So you have to sort of decide in your environment whether a pickup, which is more isolated but less natural, is better than a microphone, which is less isolated but more natural. Um, not a bad idea if you play in a number of different environments to have a pickup and a microphone. Um, also keep in mind that if you are using a, a wedge monitor or an amplifier that's throwing your sound back at you, if you have a microphone, you're going to be dealing with uh, feedback a whole lot more than if you have a pickup. Pickups are not immune to feedback, but they are much less likely to feedback than a microphone is. Okay, so that's the brief spiel on mics versus pickups. All right, so back to here. Um, the maple is locally sourced, as are the tuners. Yes, good point. So the tuners on the back of these things, uh, these tuners right here, doo -doo, are, uh, are made in New York as well. Um, and they do. They, uh, they do two different kinds of frets. They do the regular guitar style frets that are nice and tall. And when you push down, if you're behind that fret, the note's going to be in tune, as in tune as, as any guitar is, which is not very in tune, but never mind that. Um, It'll be more in tune than somebody who's just learned how to play a violin, okay? And it'll be more in tune than a person who can't hear. Because uh, I don't care how good you are, if you can't hear, you can't play in tune. And there are maybe, I probably know three people that are an exception to that rule. They're that good. Um, if you're watching me on this live stream, you're probably not one of those people. Uh, I'm definitely not one of those people. Um, so... Yes, they do full guitar style frets and then a little reduced profile fret, which is more like the Mark Wood fret, where you can feel it under your fingers, but it's not always fretting out um, sort of a tactile confirmation that you're in the right place. So, um, yeah. That is, uh, that's sort of the spiel on electric violin, luthery violins. We have two of them in the shop right now. The, uh, the one with the starfish, this is the Barbera. Uh, the Barbera 5. Um, they both come with a case. The, so the Barbera 5 that does not have a strap on there, $1,550. And the, the Dragonfly 5-string with the Starfish pickup that does have the strap system on there, um, $1,450. So, awesome. I'm going to go ahead and sign off right now. And um, we will chat with you guys next Wednesday. we got another topic for you then. Uh, I don't know what topic it's going to be yet, but I'll come up with something in the next week. Um, if you guys have some more questions, and thank you for all these great discussions, by the way. My, my only gripe about the YouTube thing is all these comments that are coming through on YouTube right now, I can't actually respond to any of those once I log in after the, uh, after the thing. So if you guys want to have more of sort of a discussion on this, we can do it in the real comments section after this video airs. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions in there. And then it's the same thing on Facebook. I can't actually respond to all these comments on Facebook after the fact. And uh, so, yeah, we can answer any questions that we didn't get to. Sometimes they come by kind of fast and I can't see them. Um, so I'll respond to all the questions that I can after the fact. Um, in the YouTube section, if, you, if I didn't get to your question, if you can just put it in the real comments section underneath, then I can answer it. Um, and on the Facebook side, I'll get to them as best I can. And then Peter from EVL can also get to them. All right. So uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Buy an EVL Dragonfly. These things are really cool. And I'll see you. Uh, I don't know if I'll see you or not, but you might see me in a week. All right. Booyah.